A big announcement from the federal government today on uh, the banning of assault style weapons, different varieties, 1,500 different models of these types of weapons. We're going to bring in our global news correspondents now. Again, David Aiken, Abigail Beeman, they join us from our nation's capital. Mike Drolet joins us from his home in Toronto. Uh, Mike has also reported on several mass shootings here in Canada and south of the border. I want to get to each one of your takes because there's still a lot of questions surrounding this move. Uh, and we're going to start with Abigail. Abigail, the opposition has already reacted to this. What is Andrew Scheer saying? Right, so uh, Andrew Scheer has already issued a statement, as you say. They're not happy with the Prime Minister's move to enact this ban through regulation and not through legislation, where it would need to be debated in the House of Commons. And as you know, this is a minority Liberal government. Uh, the Prime Minister has talked many times about the importance of working with other parties uh, in this situation, but here he's enacted uh, this ban effective immediately without actually uh, bringing it to the House of Commons for or debate. Now, parts of what were announced today uh, in terms of plans for the future will come to the House of Commons for legislation, according to the Prime Minister. A big piece of, of that is the buyback program that is promised. So the government is giving a two-year amnesty for people who own these weapons uh, that, uh, that they already have in their possession. A government backgrounder that came out suggested that there are 100,000 of them in Canada. So there's going to be this two-year amnesty where you can't use the weapons. Uh, you cannot uh, sell them within Canada. You can export them if you have the proper permit. But in terms of what happens for a buyback program, that's something that's going to be uh, debated in the House of Commons and move forward with legislation. I, I was uh, listening when the Prime Minister was asked a couple of times whether that buyback program would be mandatory. So what happens if you if you don't sell that weapon back to the government? Uh, is that illegal? And he didn't really clearly uh, answer in, in that case what would happen. So pieces here moving through legislation, the public safety minister also speaking about uh, red flag legislation, so stricter controls um, for, for people who would potentially be a, a problem to own a gun. Uh, the Conservatives in, in their statement are also calling for a smuggling task force through the CBSA at the border to address excuse me, to address uh, guns that are crossing the border. That wasn't mentioned uh, in the Prime Minister's plan today. So as you say, still a lot of questions here. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in David Aiken. And David, you know, we heard our one of our global news uh, producers asking a question that a lot of people have. Why not a handgun ban as we see the number of handgun deaths uh, in big cities, especially going up every single year? What other questions stood out for you? Yeah, I thought that was the big one. That's our producer, Chris Hello. Good question to the Prime Minister. He promised in the election campaign, and he did it. I remember I was with him on the trail. Uh, he was standing at the Danforth in Toronto, where we saw that shooting a couple of years ago, and uh, promised that he would give the power to mayors, and I know Toronto Mayor John Tory was keen about this, to allow mayors of cities to ban handguns. And it's true, handguns kill more people than long guns. Handguns kill way more people than some of these uh, automatic weapons. So that's the first thing is, that really is uh, more of the problem than anything else. Um, another thing too as well is, uh, as the Prime Minister was, was asked, the weapons that have been used in many of these mass shootings, including in the one in Nova Scotia, were either used by someone who did not have, was not a legal gun owner, that is, as far as we know in the situation in, in, uh, in Nova Scotia, there was, he did not have the appropriate firearm certificate, or they're illegal guns. They're not lawfully acquired guns. Now, uh, Bill Blair, the public safety minister, said, sure enough, a legal gun begins, or any gun begins as a legal gun and turns into a lawful gun, but you're going to hear the conservatives say it's illegal guns uh, that end up killing people. And finally, the third point is, what's going to happen now is there'll be a series of regulations. Cabinet can do the, the cabinet can ban a specific model by regulation. It needs legislation for the banning the whole class of guns and enacting this buyback. So what happens with regulations? You heard Bill Blair, the public safety minister, talk about this. It's kind of like playing whack-a-mole. The cabinet says, we're going to ban this model, boom, and the manufacturers go, okay, well, we'll modify it and sell it as this model. Cabinet bans that model, the manufacturers tweak it, and they sell it as this model. So that could be a problem still, that some of these weapons that the uh, government is trying to ban will just get modified by manufacturers and still show up uh, in law as lawful, legally legal guns. 
Mm, yeah, a lot of questions there, and, and that's a good point that you're making. Let's bring in Mike Trolley. As I mentioned, Mike's covered um, a lot of tragedies in our country. Uh, and Mike, you know, the uh, the minister said, the minister Blair said today that this was a plan all along, but what happened in Nova Scotia deepened the government's resolve uh, to get this done. Uh, let's focus a bit more. I know David mentioned it, but more on the illegal guns that are used in these type of tragedies. What stood out to you and what wasn't answered? Well, I'm actually mostly curious about uh, what's going to happen with when they do this buyback. I mean, every time we've done any of these stories, we've any time we've seen one of these these giant shootings happens. Uh, I was at Sandy Hook in Connecticut, uh, Virginia Tech, obviously the Danforth. I mean, just to name a few, uh, you end up getting so much pushback from gun owners, and and they say, yes, you know what? It's illegal guns. It's guns that have been brought in from the states and. Uh, you know, the legal gun owners always push back and say, you know, why don't you come shooting with me and I'll show you just how much fun they are and, and how I'm not the problem. Of course, that is part of the problem. It's the fact that there, there's so many guns out there and, and um, you know, you can't legislate for just a few people. You have to legislate for everyone. And that is going to be really interesting to see. I mean, we, see, we hear in the States when they really talk about gun control, the pushback is extreme. Whether or not we're going to get that here, I'm not sure if to that to that same extent. But in the in the months and the weeks and months to come, that is going to be really something to, to watch for. Let's talk about the enforcement piece uh, a bit more. And David, I'm hoping you can help me with that. How how is this expected to be enforced uh, and implemented? Well, I, I, this is, it's a great question. And I can tell you, I mentioned a minute ago about how, you know, there is different kinds of guns that governments would regulate. The RCMP has its own power to set a certain kind of gun, a specific model as not, uh, not useful. And we used to be in a situation, and Bill Blair will know this from his time as the uh, police chief in the city of Toronto, different police forces could make different sorts of regulations. It was a tremendous hodgepodge, a tremendous mishmash, and it was very difficult to enforce the law. Uh, any police officer I've talked to says they want a clear idea. And you can't expect a police officer showing up on the scene of a potential crime, a potential shooter to go, wait, is that illegal, that weapon, or is this kind of weapon illegal? And that's why, again, it's important to ban an entire class of weapon that's easy to recognize, and it makes it easy for police officers to enforce a ban. Again, uh, Bill Blair will certainly know that from all his life on the streets. And a lot of this problem, again, gets, uh, if it's a, if, again, you think it's a problem, it gets solved with legislation that's a little more clear, but we're not gonna see that. Uh, we're not gonna see that for a long time, because as Mike said, there is gonna be pushback from conservatives for sure, and I should point out from some new Democrats. I'm thinking of Charlie Angus, who represents uh, remote rural riding in Northern Ontario, with Nathan Cullen, who represents Northern BC. Um, you know, they're remote ridings where there's a lot of farmers, a lot of hunters who aren't really th are thrilled about the idea of more federal gun control. And when we're talking about uh, other moves, I think the Prime Minister said today the focus is obviously on COVID. And right now that's what the calendar, everything is about uh, COVID-19 and our reaction to that. But then he said once that's kind of off the calendar, then we can talk about the buyback program, the handgun ban. But do we have any idea what that timeline could even look like, David? Well, so here's what the current parliamentary sort of uh, <laughs> terms of engagement are. Um, when we have these sort of virtual sessions, these House of Commons sessions, you know, over the Internet, uh, the promise was that government ministers would stick to talking about stuff or introducing new measures related to COVID-19. But whenever the House of Commons has convened and, uh, you know, is sitting in its proper format, and that seems to be now about once a week, the government can introduce legislation but there's no way they're going to get unanimous consent to try to pass that legislation uh, without all consent of parties. And again, the Conservatives are not going to let a gun control bill pass without the entire full regalia of Parliament going over it. That means witnesses, that means committee hearings, full studies, and we're not going to get to that point where we can get Parliament sort of the full Parliament uh, experience uh, for quite some time. So in that sense, uh, there could be, again, legislation tabled, but it is going to be a long time before we have the ability, or a longer time in any event, before Parliament will have the chance to give it the scrutiny that I think many in Parliament would like to give it. And again, it's not just the Conservatives, it will be some NDP and I should say BQ MPs who represent rural and remote ridings.
This is very much, Afar, you know this from being in Toronto, this is very much an urban story and liberals represent urban ridings. Think of all the ridings in the country named Toronto Center, Hamilton Center, well not Hamilton Center, but Kitchener Center, you name it. Center ridings are urban ridings and they want gun control in those urban areas. I was just uh, thinking that when you were saying that because this country is so vast and there are so many different opinions uh, on gun control and of course there's going to be a lot of opinions and reaction to what the Prime Minister said today. Thank you both both very much for your insight and analysis on this. Now, just to recap and to bring you up to speed, the Prime Minister, as you know, now has announced a move to ban assault-style weapons, saying every one of us remembers the day when we realized that in Canada, a man with a gun could irrevocably alter our lives for the worst. Effective immediately, it is no longer legal to buy, sell, transport, import, or use 1,500 models of military-grade assault weapons there will be a two-year amnesty for current gun owners. That's to give them time to comply uh, with the legislation. And uh, you, you cannot, I should say, uh, use these weapons during that time.